Greetings everybody! Today I'm going to be reviewing the Honey Glow Pineapple. Today I'm going to be making ketchup out of the Honey Glow Pineapple, I guess. Okay, so I haven't done one of these in a while. Basically I'm going to take a recipe that would normally work with making ketchup out of tomatoes, but I'm going to replace all the tomatoes with pineapple and see what happens. Besides the pineapple itself, here are the ingredients. I have half of a large onion, three small cloves of garlic, a little hunk of ginger, one hot pepper. It's not super hot, kind of like a medium hot pepper. Uh, this here is a little bit of cinnamon, little piece. That is one clove. Two cardamom pods with the, uh, the shell on it two allspice berries, and this right here is mango powder. And what this is, is a green mango, like an unripe mango, that has been dried out and then ground up into a powder. So this is going to add a little bit of tartness, but also it's going to add a little bit of like a tropical taste, a little bit of a mango flavor to it. Uh, besides that, three tablespoons of brown sugar, one teaspoon of salt, and this here is one-fourth plus one tablespoon of cider vinegar. So I'm going to take the whole spices here and grind those up in this mortar. That's fine. And I'm going to combine that with the salt. That can all go in at the same time. Next, I'll cut all this stuff up. Okay, so on a medium-low heat, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil in. Not a lot, just like a teaspoon of oil. So this is not a cooking channel, by the way. <laughs> but here's a little thing that I do. Here's a little pro tip that I'm sure you probably already know. I always take like one piece of onion and throw that in the oil to see when it starts sizzling. Once that starts sizzling, the rest is going to go in. So first I'm going to put the onion in, and also the ginger. So after a couple of minutes, the onions will start to sweat, and that is the time to add in the uh, spices and the salt. That way the, uh, the spices can wake up a bit, and so you don't forget the salt. Then a couple more minutes, next the chili pepper and the garlic. Okay, so I'm going to actually turn this down onto a low heat and let this cook just for a minute or two as I work on the pineapple. We're going to decapitate the pineapple. And I'm not going to use the whole thing, I'm just going to use half of it. So I'm going to cut it in half like that. Now, I'm sure there's a really good way to cut a pineapple that I'm not aware of, so I'm just going to hack into it like a caveman and uh, see if that gets me anywhere. It doesn't really matter because in the end, it's just going to be turned into sludge anyhow. Maybe I'll do it like this. Is a good idea? One of these days I'll learn how to do this properly and I'll make a video about it. This does not seem to be the good way to do it. <laughs> it seems a little little precarious. Yeah, because I'm going to be just cooking this to death and then making a slurry out of it, uh, if these little eyes are in there, those little bits, those little rough bits you normally want to cut out are in there, don't really care. But this all goes into the pot, as does the brown sugar and the vinegar. Making ketchup out of a pineapple is kind of like making risotto out of a pineapple. You need to stir it constantly and for a really long time. I'm going to let this cook for 30 minutes, 30 whole minutes, a really long time. And basically you want this to cook down until it is just a ghost of its former self. As I am working on this, I'm going to kind of like regulate the temperature and the liquid. Okay, so if like this dries out and there's like nothing left, that's not good. You want to add a little splash of water to it. 
And also, you want to regulate the temperature a little bit. You want it to be kind of like a low boil. See that? See how it's like just kind of bubbling a little bit? That's good. You don't want it to be like exploding all over the place, because then you're going to have little chunks of pineapple get you in the eye, and then you're going to be blinded, and it's going to be bad. So if that happens, like, look at that. See that? It's getting a little aggressive. I'm going to actually lower the temperature just a tad. So I'm going to pull myself away from that ketchup to talk about the Del Monte Honey Glow, which is a, uh, a variety of pineapple that has come out recently, and I've been seeing it at uh, fruit and vegetable markets and supermarkets quite a bit lately. Uh, I don't know if it's any good. I've never had this before, but uh, in the past there was something called the Pink Glow Pineapple, which was a pineapple that was pink inside. And that one actually tasted really good. I really like that one. Uh, so let's see if, uh, if this one's good too. It tastes like a nice, sweet pineapple. Sometimes you get a pineapple, you cut it open, you eat it, and it just tastes like nothing, like water or like pine needles or something. That one tastes the way that uh, a good pineapple tastes like. So, it's good. It's not like anything like crazy or anything, but if they are all like that, if they all taste consistently like that, I'd say it's worth picking up. Back to the ketchup. Okay, well that was 30 minutes on the stove and it is still very liquidy. I actually did not add any water to this. This is the first time I've made a ketchup on this channel that did not need water added to it. In fact, I could probably reduce this down a little bit more. So yeah, good job Del Monte Honey Glow. You are a very juicy pineapple. Uh, in this case, it doesn't really uh, help me any. It's probably hurting and if, if anything because it is a little bit liquidy still but I think I'm gonna go with it anyway it's pretty fibrous so I want to like break this down I think I might need some of that liquid so uh, let's see what happens I'm going to blend it with an immersion blender and this is quite full, <laughs> so one mistake I could make is just to turn this on and go right in, and that's going to make a huge mess. It's going to blow this stuff up everywhere. But I think if I put it in like this and just kind of go slow with it, maybe I won't blind myself. Okay, so if you thought it was annoying to cook this for 30 minutes on the stove, welcome to a whole other circle of hell. Uh, you gotta push it through this strainer, which can be very time consuming depending on what you're using. Tomatoes end up not being too bad. Uh, this might be tricky because it's kind of fibrous in there. So this is going to take a very long time. So uh, yeah, I don't want to run out of battery and I don't want to fill up my SD card. So. I'm going to turn off the camera now, and uh, I'll be back whenever this is done. So about 10 minutes later, and this is what we're left with. <laughs> I've turned all of that into some mush and a very liquidy ketchup. I might actually have to reduce this down a little bit, uh, which I've never had to do before. As for this stuff, if you're one of those people that doesn't like things to go to waste, you could always take this and spread it on a piece of bread. into waste. So as you can see here this ketchup is pretty thin and in this case you could do two things. You can uh, turn on the heat and reduce this down to concentrate it a little bit or you can cheat which is what I'm going to do. First turn the heat on just like on a low heat and next I'm going to go for the secret ingredient cornstarch. So actually, if you buy ketchup at the store, very often it is thickened with cornstarch or some other sort of thickener. So uh, this is not like too out of the ordinary. And you don't want a lot. I'm just gonna put a little, probably like a half teaspoon of, nah, not even. 
yeah, maybe like a fourth of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of cornstarch. Sprinkle that on there. Some people will dissolve the cornstarch in some water first, a little bit of water, so it distributes more evenly. I'm not doing that because I don't, uh, I, I don't care, whatever. Okay, you see these little bubbles? That's what you want. So I'm gonna let this just cook for maybe like one minute more, just so all the cornstarch is uh, distributed and gets a chance to thicken a little bit. If I were to try this now, it would be okay, but it's gonna be even better if it gets a chance to cool down. So it's going in the fridge. My ketchup has cooled down sufficiently. It's been a couple hours in the fridge. It also thickened up pretty nicely. So let's give it a shot. First, let's just try a little fingerful of ketchup. Nice consistency, I like it, all right. Ooh, that has a kick to it from that chili pepper. So that is a spicy <laughs> pineapple ketchup. But it's good. It's really good. That, that tastes delicious. Um, it's similar enough to regular tomato ketchup where you could use this as a regular tomato ketchup. It's not a, like overwhelmingly strong pineapple taste. It's still something you'd want to use as a savory sort of thing but it does have like that sweet fruity little little note to it also. Uh, I think this would go really well on anything that you would put regular ketchup on. This would be great on like a hamburger or on french fries. It would be giving you what ketchup gives you, but also give you this little tropical kick. That's fun. I'm not just gonna eat this off my finger though. I do wanna try this on something. And uh, what I'm going to do is maybe a little bit controversial. I'm going to put this on pizza. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And uh, <laughs> pineapple on pizza is, uh, is one of those things people like to fight about. My stance on the whole pineapple on pizza thing is, well, I think that fruit is often put in this little box where like fruit is a sweet, it's a dessert. Shouldn't be. Beautiful things can happen when you put fruit on savory stuff. However, I'm also from New York City. And uh, I don't want you to put pineapple on my pizza. <laughs> so I think that pineapple goes well on pizza if the pizza in question does not stand well enough on its own. This on its own is a thing of beauty. I, don't, I wouldn't want to tarnish it with anything. Maybe a little dash of uh, red chili flakes. That's what you put on a dollar slice. Uh, Putting pineapple on this, I think, would ruin it, because then you'd be tasting pine pineapple instead of the beauty that is a New York City dollar slice. However, if you have crappy pizza, then, uh, yeah, put toppings on it. I get it. You know, if it's not good enough on its own without toppings, then put toppings on it until it tastes good. And one of those things, if you want to put pineapple on it, I don't care. Just don't put it on my New York City slice. Okay, so I'm going to try this on its own. Oh, yeah. So this is a nice shot with a bite taken out of it, but uh, I'm going to put a little bit of a little bit of ketchup on it. Putting my feelings aside about sullying a piece of New York City pizza, those flavors do go together. Uh, it, it tastes all right. And I think that this is actually better than fresh pineapple on a pizza. I mean, definitely better than, like, if you go to a place where they put canned pineapple on a pizza, no. Fresh pineapple on a pizza, okay, All right, I, I, got under, I can understand. Canned, no, but that's another, that's another video. But this is better than both of those things because it has a savory note that kind of ties it together a little bit more. Because of the onion in there, because of the chili in there, that little spicy kick in it, uh, and the spices and everything, it, it works. It works pretty well. Um, so I think that pineapple ketchup works well uh, on anything you'd want to put ketchup on and things like that you'd want to put pineapple on as well, including pizza if you are one of those sorts of people. So um, I would prefer my New York City slice without anything on it, but 
can't lie, it does it does go with that uh, with that flavor. Pineapple ketchup is um, it's a good thing. Definitely something to try out if you want to try making your own ketchup. If you have any ideas of other things you would like me to turn into ketchup, let me know below. If you have strong opinions about putting pineapple on pizza, let me know that below as well. Uh, my cat thinks that you should only put anchovies on pizza. She's one of those types, but uh, yeah, I think that's that's all I have to say. So I'll see you all next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hey, before you click away, I'd like to give a big shout out to my mega patrons. That includes Smarter Every Day, Sean M. Glynn, and Lofty Rex. They are big supporters over on Patreon.com. Patreon is how I can continue to keep this series going. So if you'd like to help support the channel, uh, take a look at the link in the description below. If you don't want to go on Patreon, another way to support the channel is to buy a t-shirt. T-shirts are available also in the description below. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.